Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Amy Wazinski and I'm Professor of Information Systems at Kennesaw State University and I'm excited to be the teacher for your course. I've been at Kennesaw State University since 2000. This is my home, go Owls. Many of my students, instead of calling me Dr. Wazinski, they call me Dr. Amy. I'm fine with your calling me Amy or Dr. W or whatever you find comfortable. I'm very flexible. Wazinski is absolutely my husband's fault. Here's a super secret way to remember how to spell it. W-O-S-Z-E-B-R-A-C-A-T-Z-E-B-R-A-Y-N-S-K-I. There will not be a test on this at the end of the day. While work is very important to me, my family always comes first, probably like many of you. I have two sons, both young adults, still living at home, working and saving money for a first house, I hope. As I said, family is important and these two are definitely my focus. Luna and Hershey. These two fur babies unexpectedly barged into our lives when they were five weeks old and only 2.2 and 2.8 pounds. It was like having twins for a couple of months. They're my babies. I love them more than my kids. Don't tell my kids. Well, my kids already know. And my husband teaches astronomy in Cherokee County. As they say in the South, bless his heart. Before he started teaching, he worked for many years as a meteorologist at the Weather Channel. He was not on air, but he told the people on air what to say. He also had the distinction of being part of the project group of just a few people who launched Weather.com for the first time, on CompuServe, no less. In Weather.com, a bright guy named Alan Gallenbeck at the Weather Channel reserved the URL from the internet back in August 1994 when there wasn't much of an internet yet. What great foresight. In the early days of the internet when we needed weather information, we typed weather.com and voila, the Weather Channel was there. Now let me give you some information on my industry experience prior to joining academia. I worked for about 10 years in, in industry after earning my bachelor's degree in industrial engineering from Georgia Tech, go Jackets. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, and I'll let you fill in the rest. After that, I began work as an apparel engineer at Sewell Manufacturing in Bremen, Georgia, just north of Carrollton. Sewell made men's and women's tailored suits for companies such as Land's End and Colors by Alex Alexander Julian. I moved up to assistant plant manager after about seven months there supervising the engineering and office staff and supporting the plant manager and the director of manufacturing. I began the MBA program at KSU while working at Sewell. Sewell moved to Heflin, Alabama shortly after I left and they mostly went out of business after that. As you probably know, very little apparel is manufactured in the United States anymore. After Sewell, I moved to Ram Stiles, who made uniforms for Delta Airlines and Steak and Shake and Waffle House and many others. Ram Stiles, like Sewell, went out of business shortly after I left. At least most places waited until after I left to go out of business. After Ram Stiles, I went to Amona Corporation, which is now part of Coloplast Corporation, so they didn't technically go out of business. Amona manufactured external breast prostheses for women who underwent a mastectomy. I was brought in to launch an apparel line for the breast prostheses, including breast covers and bras. Amona's brand is still highly regarded in this niche market. Along the way, I used technology wherever I could, trying to find a way and be innovative and use it my daily responsibilities. With my interest in technology and teaching, I did change careers. I taught at Career Development Institute in Atlanta, a proprietary school which offered computer science and technology related degrees. I really enjoyed teaching there. Incidentally, they also went out of business. The C-level executives in Minnesota misused federal education funds given to students. Some of those people, the upper people, not in our office, were blacklisted from ever working anywhere they received federal funding. 
I know criminal prosecution was started, but I don't know the final outcome. I left one week before the feds put the padlock on the door. Most people stayed that week without pay. It was the second week we had not been paid, so I went home and asked them to call me when they could pay me. Three years later, I received about $800 of the $3,000 they owed me. Meanwhile, I moved to Troutman Sanders Law Firm, a very large firm in Midtown Atlanta at the Bank of America building. Our offices were on the 46th to 52nd floors, but I didn't have a window office. There, I developed databases, conducted training, created training materials and documentation, and provided all sorts of technical support to whatever was going on. While at Troutman Sanders, I applied to and was accepted to Clemson University's PhD program, Go Tigers. I'm not as big of a Clemson fan, but still, I spent two years living at Clemson, completing my coursework for the PhD program. Then I accepted a full-time job offer at Georgia State and was there for two years while I finished my dissertation and, oh yeah, I had a baby too. My KSU teachers in the MBA program were the best I've ever had, truly. They encouraged and mentored me. They are why I pursued and completed the PhD program. My life would probably have been very different if I had not gone down this path. When I finished my dissertation in 2000, KSU had a job opening, and it was a good fit. I've been here ever since. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. How many people can say that? I do know how fortunate I am. I do my best to emulate my best KSU professors, treating students with respect, offering advice when requested and sometimes when not requested, and facilitating classroom discussions. Let me share my teaching background. I teach in the MS and Information Systems program and in the Georgia Web MBA program. I served as interim chair, assistant chair of the IS department for a couple of years, and I'm happy to be back with graduate students now. I also served as the MB MSIS program director for over 10 years, and I'm passionate about the students and the classes. I teach classes in informatics, legal and ethical issues in IS, and IS strategy. I research at the intersection of diversity, law, ethics, and IS. I have studied IT professionals in the US, Ukraine, Russia, India, and Mexico. Cult culture and tradition influence how we complete teamwork, the education we receive, the expectations we have regarding work, family life balance, and so forth. Emerging naturally out of this research stream is an interest in outsourcing and teamwork in different regions of the world. I've also studied methods of improving IS education. With a team of co-authors in the Web MBA program, I led a study that applied Agile principles to development of the MBA IS course. While Agile has been studied in many contexts, a detailed analysis in the area of delivering information systems education was lacking. This research gave us the opportunity to improve the teaching of the MIS course in the MBA program and was an opportunity to link research with practice. More recently, I've begun to research in areas related to management of information security technologies and recommendations for changes. While much of my research has used the individual level of analysis, I'm currently working on several projects regarding policies and procedures used by critical infrastructure systems, co-authored with Andy Green and others. Although we would like to think that critical infra infrastructure systems at the local, state, and national levels are secure, accurate, and timely, we identified concerning problems in emergency alert systems and proposed steps to mitigate the risk. This is very similar to what happened with the oil pipeline recently, another critical infrastructure system. We also don't want to have another zombie apocalypse as was broadcast by emergency systems in 2013. Google it. It really happened and it's kind of interesting. And we don't want another 2018 broadcast from Hawaii that says incoming 
ballistic missile alert. Take cover immediately. What are you supposed to do with that information? That was inaccurate. In my spare time, I like to walk on the treadmill or outside. I also love reading books and often do the treadmill and books together. It makes me exercise. I'm not talking about reading the textbook for this course or academic articles, both of which can be thrilling, of course. I do read the textbook and read and write academic articles, but I love to read fun books like mystery, suspense, horror, post-apocalyptic, zombie, etc. I like any genre that is well-written. Reading is one of my passions. Like many of you, I'm sure, I also like binge-watching Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and YouTube and TV. Side note, how would we have survived the pandemic without streaming services? I enjoy really diverse types of TV shows or series from The Walking Dead, one of my faves, although it's time for it to end, to Better Call Saul, to Riverdale, probably time for it to end too, to City of Angels, to Us. The movies I enjoy are equally diverse, although I shy away from romance and romantic comedies. I've already seen enough of those in my life. Even before the pandemic, I did most of my work at home. The only exception was that meetings moved online and that was a good thing. My guess is that many companies who thought work from home initiatives would lead to lower efficiency and effective effectiveness found just the opposite. I know I have. I work at times that are flexible. That doesn't mean I work only when I want to work, but I choose when I do my work. I'm a night owl, so I do most of my work after the sun goes down. You'll see that pattern in my grading and in my emails to you. One time, I responded to a student email at 1.15 a.m. after a student had emailed me at 1 a.m. Their response, why are you answering email at 1.15 a.m.? Well, because you sent it at 1 a.m. Now, if you send a message at 8 a.m., it may be a while. Surely we have some similarities. You might like dogs or have a family or enjoy reading or binge watching series, doesn't everybody? Or perhaps your professional background or education are similar to mine. I find we have more similarities than differences many times. Classes are always diverse, which makes the presentations more engaging and interesting and often provokes me to think in different ways. Here I mean diversity not just as race, sex, ethnicity, and so forth, but broad diversity in how we were raised, where we were born, how we think, how old we are, where we live, who we love, what we do in our spare time. So while you may see me in business and casual attire, if I'm out and about at KSU, what you may not know is that I'm sitting at my work couch, perhaps with sleeping puppies nearby and maybe wearing my, I thought this was a Zoom meeting bottoms. They're not pajamas or even lounge clothes. They are athleisure. You've learned about me. Now I'd like for you to introduce yourself. Follow the guidelines in the syllabus to share a little bit of your story with the class. I'm looking forward to a great class.